Hello, so what you will need to draw a mandala is a compass, a nice sharp pencil, a protractor, you don't have to have a 361 like this, it could be just 180, that's absolutely fine, and then some pens to ink with. And again, they don't have to be black, black is my preference, um, but you could use multicoloured uh, fine liners or gel pens, whatever you want to use. You could even use paint if you wanted, but I suggest starting with something simple like these. Now everyone does this differently, but I try to get as big a circle as possible drawn out on my page. Yeah, so that will do. And I like to make sure that that central dot where the compass has gone in is quite visible because that's important. We'll be using that again. Okay, so because you can't see this dot very well, I'm just going to mark it in place. So that is my central dot where my protractor and my compass and everything will be going from. Um, so using this compass, I want that cross in the middle where those two lines intersect to go directly on top of this dot here. So if I line that up. Now some people do this differently but I like to be quite precise when I draw mandalas so I go around and mark at every 10 degrees a line. This is why having a sharp pencil is helpful because it just means that it's slightly more accurate Okay, so we have the ruler. Now, this is a bit tedious, but it's essential. So we wanna connect all these lines up. So you'll be going from one end to the other, making sure that the line goes through one of the lines that you've drawn on the outer circle, through the dot in the middle, and then back out the other side. My ruler is not quite long enough, but it will do the job I suggest not pushing too hard with the pencil because all of these lines you will be rubbing out eventually. You're essentially just drawing yourself a grid that will help you draw your mandala and then once you've inked everything you can start rubbing these lines out. So there we have it. This is the main bit of the mandala process. It is the longest, but I assure you that the prep work will help. So I'm going back to my um, compass again, and I'm just gonna go to that central dot, and I'm just gonna start adding a few rings on this circle that I can use as guidelines for drawing. So making sure that I'm lined up on that dot. Just going to add a circle in the middle here. Now how big you do these circles and how far apart they are is entirely up to you. Um, and it will ultimately uh, dictate what your end result will look like. So I like to do a mixture of smaller rings surrounded by bigger ones, but they all make for really cool results. 
I might not draw all of them in for now. I might just draw a couple in and then see where this mandala takes me. Okay, so let's just leave it at that for now. Now this stage, you can either draw in pencil or if you feel confident, you can go straight to using your pens. So I am gonna start with my small Faber-Castell um, artist pen. And this is where the patience comes in. So we can use these uh, lines here to do repeating patterns. So if I just show you what I mean, I'm just going to ink this inner circle first of all. In fact, I'm going to have a slightly thicker pen. That one's a bit too thin. There we go. I've gone up to the medium size. So I'm going to ink this black circle here. And then go over the second circle. See, even with this, you can see that the lines that I'm drawing aren't completely perfect, but that's almost the beauty of hand drawing a mandala. So even though we've got this lovely grid that means that everything will be symmetrical that we put down, because we're drawing by hand, it's still going to have that hand-drawn touch to it, which I really like. Um, so I've just switched pens to the slightly thinner one, and I'm going to just draw over the grid lines that I've got here. I am going to draw almost imagine a line down the middle here that will and this will be the point of the petal and I'm going to expand it out across three of the segments. Now I'm actually deciding to sketch these because I'm not too confident that I'll draw them perfectly first time with pen as we've just seen with this. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna go back in with my black pen again. And this is, you know, you can start adding little details. So fun ways to add some details might be to put some little lines on the middle of the petals. Or we could fill this outer circle. So if I just draw around the edge, we could start adding thinner lines in between. And now I'm just gonna keep adding to this. So. I'm going to speed up the rest of this video, but um, you'll see that there's no kind of structure to what I do. It kind of just, I just progress with the picture, see where it takes me. Um, but yeah, hopefully you'll get some ideas for shapes and things that you can do in your video, in your mandalas, sorry. It doesn't take much to make a mandala look very, very effective. And again, you know, don't worry about your lines being shaky or things not being quite perfect. It is nice to have that hand-drawn touch to it. There's plenty of apps out there that you can 
draw perfectly symmetrical mandalas with and this video is about actually embracing the process of drawing a mandala the slow way. Okay, so where I was filming this, I actually, I'm struggling to draw in this position, but I made a little mistake here where that line doesn't join up. So one of the great things about having a mandala is that if you make a mistake somewhere, you can do something inventive to correct it and then just repeat it around the rest of the circle. So you can watch now as I'm gonna take this little mistake and turn it into something that looks like it was meant to be there. that mistake was never there okay so I'm I'm just gonna start adding some details into these bigger shapes so that is you know when you see these really complex mind-blowing mandalas all it is is bigger shapes with a lot of smaller shapes embedded inside of them so I'm just gonna roughly sketch one out here and then see. Yeah, so something like that all the way around would be quite nice. So one thing I like to think about when drawing is the continuity of patterns and shapes. So you can see in this mandala, I've kind of got a bit of a theme going on where there are petals, circles, lines, and then solid blocks of color. So this is something that I'm gonna try and integrate to the entire mandala. Again, you don't have to, but I like to have a lot of um, symmetry and I guess just being a designer, I'm used to having everything match up. <laughs> So here we have my finished mandala. Um, this is my favorite bit. <laughs> and this is where we rub out the lines. But word of warning, I wouldn't start rubbing out straight away if you're using ink because I've made the mistake in the past of being too hasty with trying to rub out the lines and then I've ended up smudging some of my shapes. So just let it dry for five minutes. Um, also, if you start from the middle and work your way to the outside, then it's highly likely that the stuff in the middle, which you started working on first, is going to be dry and safe to rub out. 
So I'm going to start doing that now with mine. Um, I'm risking smudging here because obviously I'm recording a video, but here we go. Okay, cool. So this is the mandala without the grid lines. And I think you can agree that, you know, from, from this distance, it actually looks really good. It looks really kind of perfect, symmetrical. But I just want to show you that if I zoom in here, you can see that it's not completely pristine. The lines are a little bit wonky. The shapes aren't perfectly even. And, you know, it's got that lovely, authentic, hand-drawn vibe. So typically I would spend more time on a mandala, so I probably would have less of the shaky lines and the little bits of white that I've got showing on these black bits. Um, but obviously with the angle of trying to draw for this video and then trying to rush for this video, I've not, I've not actually done it as much justice as what I normally would. However, I think it's safe to say that the outcome is still really, really good. This stage now, you could leave it as it is, or you could go and add some colour. I personally prefer them in black and white, but if you're into colouring, then this would be perfect for you to start having a go at. Um, and I think my top tips for this are to take your time. The slower you draw these, the more enjoyable the process will be, and also the more stunning the outcome will be. Make sure that you use your grid. So experiment with doing, you know, lots of little circles, bigger circles, um, doing less lines around this edge here or adding more and just experimenting with what you can do with that. Um, obviously, if you look online, especially Pinterest, you'll find so much inspiration for the types of shapes that you can be drawing into these segments. But the aim of this video was mainly just to show you how to set up your grid to begin drawing. Um, I have actually included some templates as well. So if you cannot be bothered to draw a grid, I've actually uh, created a grid template that you can use. So maybe you could pop that underneath the piece of paper that you plan to draw your mandala on, or you could draw it straight on top, whichever one suits you. So yeah. Hopefully you found this video useful. And if you did, I would love it if you could give me a thumbs up and also subscribe. I would also love to see uh, your finished mandalas. So if you do happen to make it all the way through drawing one, then feel free to tag me on Instagram, which is at creativehappy.life. And I cannot wait to see what you create.